just uh, one of the series of webinars I have prepared. Uh, last time we focused on difficult vocabulary, difficult translation, mm, dilemmas. Today we are going to talk about collocations. I'll try to explain what they are in, in a few minutes time. And um, my next webinar, which will uh, be held sometime in January, will deal with idioms. So, hello again. Uh, thank you for um, such a nice turnout at this time um, of the day. Now, let's make sure that you can hear me, okay? So, could you please write in the chat box, which is two levels below the place where you can see me right now, uh, and can you just type in, hello, Piotr, we can hear you, or just fine, if anything goes. Um, I just want to make sure that you can hear me, all right? So I can see the first answer, Daniel and Eva said hello. Well, I say it back to you and also to you, Carolina. Okay, great. So I think we can start. So um, collocations, what are they? Um, I guess that uh, in a nutshell, we could say that they make our writing and they make our speaking just sound natural. Well, many years ago when I was a student of English and uh, I had my first translation classes, one of my teachers <clears throat> showed me his, um, his notebooks um, with which he prepared for the job of a translator. And actually, the way he explained it was before, that was before the time of, of internet. Uh, but every time he reads a newspaper, um, magazine, or whatever, and there's an article, he just finds word partnerships, collocations, which then help him to, um, to write better translations. So, what are collocations? Let's see um, a Wikipedia definition, maybe. Okay, so um, I'll just quote. In the English language, collocation refers to a natural combination of words. And these are closely affiliated with each other. Some expressions, such as uh, pay attention, fast food, make an effort, powerful engine, are collocations. So, um, we can say that they are natural combinations of words. Sometimes you might think that more than one word fits, um, you know, a, a vocabulary uh, context. For example, uh, the word dark, right? Uh, it very nicely goes with the word chocolate, but it doesn't go with the word tea, right? You say black tea but dark chocolate. So, um, so this is the type of vocabulary uh, concept that we are going to, to deal with. If you look at this little table, it shows you some more um, examples of natural English and unnatural English. For example, a fast train. Why not a quick train? Well, it sounds more natural in English this way, although quick and fast mean more or less aim, right? You say fast food, but not quick food. You say, but you say a quick shower, not a fast shower, a quick meal and a fast meal. And I guess that in Polish, uh, we could find similar examples as well. So, um, there are many types of word combinations. And let me just show you a couple of them right now. For example, we, we can talk about adjective noun collocations. Have a look at these examples here. You say bright color, not light color, for example. And you say a brief chat, not a quick chat. Oh, although you could say a quick chat too. So uh, sometimes more than one, um, uh, more than one combination is possible. But a fast chat, hmm, not really. You say a major problem, you could say a big problem too, actually, right? Um, you could say major problem, uh, just like in here, but not uh, a vast problem for example. 
Uh, key issue. Just one more example of uh, an adjective and noun collocation. Nouns and verbs. That's another type. So you have a noun like economy and a verb boomed. The economy boomed in 2002. Company has grown. Company has expanded. Companies merged in 2013. Um, you launch a product. The price increase possesses a problem for them. So to possess a problem, but also to create a problem, right? So many, um, many uh, ways you can you can uh, you can deal with uh, with the word problem here. Uh, the internet has created opportunities for companies. So these are noun and verb collocations. Now, what about noun plus noun, right? A surge of anger, a sense of pride, a pang of nostalgia, mm -hmm. and verb and expression with prepositions, which sometimes uh, look a little bit like idioms. So as Bob went on stage to leave his medal, you could see his sister swelling with pride. I was filled with horror when I read the newspaper report of the war, when she spilled apple juice on her blue skirt, a uh, little girl burst into tears, burst into tears. So, um, you know, you burst into tears, you are filled with horror, you swell with pride. Okay, verbs and adverbs. Just one more type. He pulled steadily on rope and helped her to safety. So you, you pull steadily, right? Verb and adverb. You can place something gently somewhere. You can whisper softly and you can smile proudly. All right. And finally, we have adverbs and adjectives. So Ben and Jane are happily married, right? So happily, adverb, married, adjective. You are fully aware, right? So that's... Uh, um, fully adverb aware adjective or blissfully unaware. Okay, so these are the types. I guess now you know what collocations are. You probably knew that before I started explaining it, but I just wanted to make sure we're on the same page. So, um, in today's webinar, uh, we are going to have a look at around 70 to 80 word combination. That sounds a bit daunting. Uh, let me put it in another way. Uh, the, uh, the stuff I prepared for today contains around 70 to 80 collocations. I am uh, almost sure we won't have time to have a look at all of them. So you'll find uh, the exercises and the examples that we will uh, discuss today, plus the ones we won't have time for uh, in the PDF material that you uh, that you are going to get after we finish today. Okay, um, so let's have a look at it. Now, first, uh, um, so I've divided my uh, I've divided my my webinar into into uh, a few sections. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about collocations. Um, um, thematically, okay. The uh, the first the first subject is discussing job applicants, um, interviews, job interviews. Um, I just thought that you you might be interested in you know a very practical, um, ready-made um, word combinations that you could use. For example, uh, when discussing job interviews. So here we go. Um, I'm going to show you a dialogue between two people discussing job applicants. So here's a situation. Um, there is John and there's Mary, and uh, they are recruiters uh, or people working for the HR company. And, and well, they have this little exchange. I'm going to read it out, and your job will be to find collocations. So please get your pencils or pens ready and how about a, a notebook or something to write down on. And I'd like you to find as many collocations as possible. When I finish reading, I'll ask you to use the chat to type in a few examples that you have found. All right, John. 
So which of these applicants do you think we should interview? They all seem to fit the job description quite well to me. It's quite a daunting task to narrow the list down to just one person. Mary. I agree. So let's start by taking up references for these 10 people. John says, OK, so why did you pick these 10 out of the 50 who applied? Mary replies, well, these 10 all seem to be people who realize the importance of working as a team. They've all shown that they're capable of mastering new skills and they're all clearly comfortable with taking on responsibility. John, did you automatically eliminate, eliminate the two who'd previously taken industrial action? Mary says, one of them. I'd also heard rumors about his involvement in a professional misconduct case. He was certainly relieved of his duties at the ARG under mysterious circumstances, but the other was standing up for a woman who'd been wrongfully dismissed, even though he knew he might lose his own job. So he sounded good to me. John replies, fair enough. He must have strength of character to risk losing his own livelihood. Mary says, that's right. So could we pencil in a meeting for considering the references? And then I'd better leave you and go and clear my desk before I go home. And John finishes, yeah, sure. How about Friday at 10? So I'm very curious about your findings. OK, please use the chat just like before. Can you just give me a few, just a few examples? This text is just, you know, packed with lots of interesting collocations. So uh, where are they? Take responsibility. Very nice, Carolina. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Uh, and take action. Another good one. Anything else? I'll wait a bit. Well, fair enough. Looks like a very interesting piece of vocabulary. I'm not sure if it's a collocation. I think it's more of a, you know, expression, which means, yeah, yeah, pretty good. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm satisfied with it. Um, Eva says, um, clearly comfortable. Mm -hmm. So that would be what? Adverb and adjective and adverb, right? Job description, uh, Daniel, mm -hmm. so we have a noun and, uh, and an adjective. Or probably noun and a noun, right? Job description, you have two nouns. But the first noun plays the role of an adjective. Okay, excellent. Good work. Now, um, these are the uh, collocations I have found in here. Uh, let's take a look at them. Maybe some of them deserve some some more, you know, a dictionary explanation. I'll be your dictionary then. Um, fit the description. I guess that's pretty clear. A daunting task. Uh, if you haven't come across this uh, combination, daunting means overwhelming, very difficult. Um, seemingly impossible to uh, to achieve. Narrow the list down so you have you know 50 candidates and you just narrow down the list to 10. So narrowing things down. Uh, take up references. I guess that's clear. Working as a team. Take industrial action. That's another meaning for uh, to you know start a strike. Um, professional misconduct. Relief of duties to be dismissed, wrongfully dismissed, okay, so similar concept, lose your own livelihood, and um, pencil in a meeting, that's a very nice one, right, you just pencil something in in your uh, diary. Uh, and clear your desk. All right. 
I have another short um, dialogue, this time between two women, and they will be um, talking about uh, a new job. Okay. The task will be quite similar. We're going to have a look at it and you'll find some collocations with me. So we have Susan and Lara. Susan starts. I hear your brothers at a fantastic new job. And Lara says, actually, it's not as good as he hoped. He's got a terribly heavy workload, and that means working some very unsocial hours. He also complains about having to do lots of menial tasks around the office, running errands for his boss. Susan replies, but he's paid well. And Lara says, no, really, um, not really. Uh, he just about gets a living wage and all the overtime is unpaid. Susan, he'll just have uh, to throw in a sickie from time to time. Yes, I suggested that to him, Lara says, but he, but he says he's afraid of getting the sack if he does. He feels there might be some prospects for him there eventually, but if he is just being used as a sweater labor at the moment. Susan says, well, with any luck, he'll eventually find that he can realize his potential there. Lara, I hope so. But they have a very high turnover of stuff, and it won't be easy for him to stay the course. Susan finishes, no, but he's very determined, isn't he? So let's hope it all works out. So, one more time. Please find as many collocations as possible in here. Okay, I'll give you a few uh, seconds to think about it. Just like previously, I think you can find lots of interesting collocations, adjectives and, and nouns and many more. Realize one's potential. Excellent. Thank you, Carolina. You realize someone's potential, so verb plus, um, plus a noun. Anything else? I'm sure you can, you can find lots of more. A living wage. Very good. Thank you, Carolina. And thank you, Daniel. Very high turn very high turnover. Mm -hmm. This is about heavy workload. Another good one. All right, let's thank you very much. Let's have a look at all of them. Maybe not all of them, but the ones I've managed to find here. Okay, land a new job, which means to be successful in getting a new job. Heavy workload, unsocial hours. Uh, unsocial hours are, you know, the time when you work, and this is not nine to five or eight to four. This is more like in the evening. Something I'm doing right now, I guess. Uh, or weekends, stuff like that, right? Unsocial hours, the time when normal people generally don't work, but what does normal mean anyway? Menial task is a task, like as you know, uh, something below your capabilities, right? Below your, something like, something slavish, like, you know, you, you you have a degree in economics, but when you uh, when you are hired, the things you do are um, you know just using the zero gene, for example, right? That's a menial task. A living wage, so um, not much. Unpaid overtime. Throw a sickie, right? Throw a sickie. This is about a sick leave. Right, so you throw a sickie, but you don't uh, leave a sickie. Right, you can leave uh, a sick leave uh, on your boss's desk, but you don't leave a sickie. So that's a strong collocation, I'd say. Get the sack to be dismissed. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but uh, on the previous page we had uh, we had the word dismissed, 
and another one which was relieved from his duties, right? Now, uh, there's a little short history uh, con which concerns this particular uh, phrase, get the sack. It goes back to the times of industrial revolution, I guess, when uh, um, there were lots of manual workers traveling around Britain and many of them had just, you know, bags or sacks with their tools in them. So if the employer mm, decided to relieve someone of their duties, in the morning that person would find the sack, the sack with his tools in it. So that meant you're fired. And since then, this uh, phrase has caught on and uh, became a very nice collocation or idiom, um, whatever you, you call it. Um, it's definitely a very strong one, a strong partnership, get the sack. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, um, prospects um, for something, sweated labor, so slavish work, realized potential, high turnover of stuff. So many people going in and going out of the company. And uh, if you stay the course, you just um, adhere to where you are, right? You don't go anywhere. You just stay the course, you stay in the same place. I suggest we do a little bit of a, an exercise right now, this time uh, slightly different. We have uh, how many? Six, uh, six gaps and six words. Be, fit, land, sweat and take. And all we have to do is complete the exercise. So we'll do this together one by one, all right? Let me just read this very quickly to you. Charlotte was surprised but happy to a job on her local newspaper as soon as she left university. She was surprised because she didn't feel that she, the job description, but she was happy because she had always dreamt of working as journalist. So she didn't really mind when she found that she was spending much of her time errands for the editor. Her brother said she was just being used as labor, but she felt confident that there are good prospects for her there. She was sure she would have the chance to on more responsibility. So let's do this together. Okay. So what's, what goes into the first gap? Any suggestions? She was happy to, to do what? Um, to take a job on her local newspaper. Uh, unfortunately, that's not a good collocation. Try again. How about land? Exactly, right. So you land a job on her local newspaper, which means you, you successfully get it. Uh, number two, is this uh, Eva's, right? Uh, she didn't fit the job description. Well, very good, Eva. Mm -hmm. uh, fit it, actually, could also be used here. What about number three? Spending much time doing what? Errands, right? Uh, what will that be? What do you do with errands? Um, you know, an errand is, you know, your teacher asks you to go to the nearest shop and get him or her a packet of cigarettes. That's an errand, right? Or uh, a mother asks uh, the son to go and get some bread from the bakery. Running errands. Thank you very much, uh, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Um, something we could say in Polish, sprawunki, right? Uh, what about number four? Her brother said she was just uh, being used as uh, sweated labor. Okay, you were very close, Carolina and Daniel. She felt confident that the 
Um, be careful about the uh, the tense in here, right? So we got fit, we got land, we got run uh, and sweat. Okay, very good, Carolina. Very nice. Mm -hmm. There were good prospects for her there. She was sure she would have the chance to. And what goes with the word on and responsibility? Take. Excellent, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Very good indeed. You land a job on a local newspaper, for example. You fit the job description, you run errands, you, um, there is sweated labor, and you take on more responsibility. Excellent. Right. So um, let's see. There's one more exercise before we, um, before we change the subject. Before we uh, watch a little clip, a video clip I, I have found for you. So uh, that will be a little prize uh, for all the great answers I, I get from you. Complete the conversation. We have, uh, we have many dialogues in here. A, B. I think Adam will leave his job before the year is out. Yes, I agree. I don't think he'll remain in the same place. Now, anybody? Uh, let me maybe just uh, show you. Uh, maybe we didn't have much time to analyze this very well. Uh, so which of these look like, you know, remain at the same place, right? Remain at the same place. Well, all I can tell you is that somewhere here in that section, somebody, somebody said, and that somebody is Carolina, stay the course. Excellent. So let's go back to the, uh, the exercise. Is that stay the course? Yes. Number two, have you heard that they may fire some members of staff? Yes, I did hear a rumor. By the way, here a rumor is another collocation. So it seems like they are everywhere. Uh, so I did hear a rumor that some people might, uh, and this is about firing people. So we've had a few words that uh, mean more or less the same. Do you remember? Let me just jog your memory a little. Fire. You remember the uh, Industrial Revolution stuff I told you about? Get the sack. Uh, be careful, Daniel. It's not get a sack, but get the sack. Or uh, be laid off. Yes, this is also possible. Thank you. So. Let's go back here. Get the sack. Excellent. Number three. Inflation is so high that I don't seem to earn enough to live on anymore. No, I don't feel uh, I don't feel I earn right. Remember? There was something. Um, there was something. Well, I can't tell you much. It was something about life, right? Or living. Living what? I don't feel I earn a living... A living what? This word means more or less the same as salary. Okay, no answers. How about I show you? Okay. Can you see it now? To get paid, but not much. So, which one is it? Somewhere in the middle. Okay, you can see some answers. Living wage. Very good. Thank you, Carolina, and thank you, Daniel. You're very active, for which I'm very glad. Okay, so that's a living wage. Okay, just three more. Um, has the HR manager been removed from his job? Yes, he was yesterday. He was what? 
uh, a couple of potential things that come to my mind that cross my mind to collocations mind cross my mind come to my mind uh, fired that would be good but there was something else um, he was fired yesterday um, okay um, have a look at this sacked mm -hmm. okay i think um something was also here so it could be fired it could be sacked but there's only there's also one more um thing we could use here have a look at this paragraph can you see anything that looks more or less relieved of the duties yes i guess that's the one although that's the one i had in mind but uh, i guess we could go with uh, some of your choices as well all of them actually all right so um i hope the workers don't decide to go on strike yes it would be very unfortunate if the if they decide to hmm Mm -hmm. Three words we need in this place. So, what are these words? Yes, it would be very unfortunate if they decide to. Ha 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 ha. One of the words is industrial. I hope. Anyone remembers that? Okay, let's take an industrial action or stage a strike. I guess the last one should be should be quite easy. It is going to be hard to decide which of the job applicants to shortlist. Yes, I don't know how we are going to, you know, just to, we had 50 candidates and we just, this is wide, a wide street. This is a one answer make the list narrowed <laughs> you're on the right track carolina try a little bit harder <coughs> shortlist good choice too uh, let me show you the um, the text where it's from okay somewhere at the beginning there's a collocation we are looking for in here so which one is it okay um the first yeah mm -hmm. can see some uh narrow down the list i can see some good answers very good narrow down the list excellent job okay just like i said um you deserve um something more than just me talking to you and reading dialogues aloud um, i'm going to show you a three four minute clip um which discusses uh, the subject um we've been talking about if you take um, also because there's a very nice transcription which goes with the uh, uh, with the video and it's on screen so your job now will be to watch that clip and again take something to write with and please make a list of three, four, maybe five, maybe more if you can hear it. Uh, collocations, strong collocations that you that you will see in the subtitles and you will hear in the uh, in the video. All right, so let's have a look. So going on a job interview has got to be one of the most nerve-wracking things you'll do. And so I want to give you three different tips on what you could do to crush your next job interview from an employer point of view, not the employee. Because 
I've done hundreds if not thousands of interviews and I can tell you what worked and what didn't work. So let's get right into it. Think about the three steps as before the interview, during the interview, and after the interview. Let's first talk about before the interview. I, the employer, love it when person wanting to get the job has done research on the company. For instance, I sat with a person the other day and I was interviewing them. They were uh, hiring for a uh, CFO position with our company. The amount of research this person had done was so impressive, I can't even tell you. He knew stories, articles, employees, leaders, challenges, everything. So I'm sitting there saying, this is how this person does research? Imagine if they work with us, how much research they're going to do on systems we need, technologies we need. This is very impressive. I like this guy. And so before him coming for the interview, I got an email on LinkedIn saying, my name is such and such. I noticed your, inter your job posting. I am really looking forward to meeting with you on this CFO position for this company. And we met, I was very impressed by him, okay? So step number one, do a lot of research. Number two, during the interview, overselling only works if you're going on a date with a girl or a guy. And by the way, if you oversell yourself, that relationship's gonna be a very short sale. You gotta be kind of honest about what you're doing with the business and who you are. So I sat with somebody and I said, how much you know about this? I have to be honest with you, I don't know a lot about this. But I can tell you what I know a lot about, boom, boom, boom. What that told me with this person is, I'm getting somebody that's gonna be very direct, very honest, and they know what they don't know, they know what they do know. One of the guys I was interviewing, he said, look, this software, I don't know about. These areas, I am very good at. But with this, all I need to do is go to a one-week course, and I would get very good at this because one thing about me is I am one of the fastest learners I know, and I can't wait to introduce that to you. Good. I like that, okay? So don't oversell yourself. Be yourself and find a way to match the need with what your values and principles are and what, what your gifts and strengths that you're bringing. Match those two together. Let me give you the last one here after the interview. I had seven job interviews I did last week that I was looking for, right? Only one of them messaged me back afterwards and said the following. They said, thank you so much for your time today. And by the way, this was the most qualified one out of all of them. How impressive is this? The person that's the most qualified who has worked with the biggest account as the most qualified person for this position was the only one that sent me the email. And he said, I just want you to know I really enjoyed our time together. Uh, I am the person you want. Not only do I want this job, I am really looking forward to this because I can see myself bringing a lot of value to the company. I hope I get a chance to meet with you on a second interview. Regardless, I wish you all the best. Sincerely, ta ta ta. I said, you know what? Purely classy on a message like this. It made me, when we sat down as the employer, when we sat down in our board meeting and the investors and everybody was looking at everybody and they had already done the reference calls, they said, who were you impressed with? I said, well, the only person that sent me a note afterwards was this person. So I want you to think about it when you're going on your next job interview. Think about the before. Why? Because it separates you from everybody else if you do your research. Think about your during on overselling. Why? Because it gives you credibility with the person you're working with, knowing you're forthright, and there's not going to be any surprises. Because if you oversell and we work, and we realize you were overselling, you get fired fast. And you don't want to get fired fast because it doesn't look good on the resume. And last but not least, on the after, send that note. Why? Because only a few people do it. Those three tips are the tips I got for you to go out and crush your next job interview. All right. So I hope you've enjoyed it. And um, uh, okay, let's make a short list, right? Uh, Right, so please use the uh, the chat one more time. Let's see what we've got. Wow, Carolina, this is really impressive. Mm, so what do we have here? Um, uh, well, I would say uh, do research, definitely. It's a strong collocation. You do research, you don't do research, but you make money, right? So that's, uh, that's a collocation. A qualified person, yeah? Mm-hmm qualified person, uh, give credibility, that's right, um, get a chance, crush your job, your next job interview, etc, etc, right, fire fast, fast learning, you can see some, some more examples in the, um, in the chat box, great, so, um, you see, what we've just done is something that you can do on your own, actually. Um, maybe not all the time you watch something on the internet, 
right, uh, or on YouTube. But um, I assume that you're in the process of learning English, just like I am. Uh, but maybe you're in, you're more interested in in collocations. So, um, so when you find one, reading a newspaper, right, or an online magazine, um, you can put it down in a notebook, right? Oh, that's an interesting word combination. I want to remember it. Mm. And actually, every time you learn a new word, it's very good to put it. You know, in the mini context, mini lexical context, because it sticks to your memory better, right? It's it, it's it's uh, it's just you know more memorable. You could do the same with watching clips on YouTube, right? You you hear something that sounds very nice, take it down. All right, thank you very much for that. We can go back to the um, to the collocations and. Uh, um, I guess my last section today with uh, with you, um, the, the, the topical section uh, that is, is related to thinking. So uh, we will have uh, just a few sentences which uh, which will be uh, again packed with collocations. Um, this is all about thinking. So let's see it. I honestly think. We can which we can win the match tonight. I'm not sure if I want to invest in your business or not, but I'll give it some thought. Bear in mind that there are often delays to flights during bad weather. It's common knowledge that Hannah is looking for a new job. My teenage son hasn't yet grasped the importance of revising for exams. I take the view that there are that we are all responsible for our own actions. It's a foregone conclusion that Jamie will win the race. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do, but I've got a rough idea. I don't subscribe to the theory that nature and nurture are of equal significance, but it is now a widespread belief. Opinions are divided as to whether mothers of young children should go out to work or not, but it is my firm conviction that different things suit different families. People hold different views. Totally um, convinced. Like in the in the square brackets, you've, you've got the uh, the definition. So where are the collocations? Okay, uh, can I ask you one more time to just give me a few examples? Where do you see strong word partnerships in these sentences? Go ahead, use the chat. Okay, I can see the first answer coming. Uh, give some thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's very good. Anything else? Bear in mind. Very good one. We need a couple of more. Common knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm. Look for a job. Very good. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Almost, there's almost at least one in each sentence. So let's have a few more. Revise for an exam. Take the view. Mm -hmm. Well, excellent. I'm pretty happy with that. And this is the full list. Uh, let me just see if everything is clear. Well, you've got the uh, the meanings in the square brackets. If you have any questions about any of the meanings, just uh, just let me know. Um, okay. Is everything? Does everything make sense? I'm only asking because there's a little exercise that follows it. Sorry, I have a little cold. All right, <clears throat> so the exercise time. Here it is. We've got eight um, quotes. In each quote, 
something great on the ear a little, okay? There's something slightly, slightly wrong with the collocation. So let's just, yeah, try to find it. <clears throat> the first quote, opinions are separated on the issue of single-sex schools, and there are sound arguments on both sides of the case. So uh, we have a couple of collocations here, but one doesn't sound right. Which one is it? What do you think? Uh huh. Okay. Who says this? Firm arguments. Um, is it so, well? Uh, sound arguments sounds fine. Okay. Opinions are divided. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the one. Thank you very much, Michal. Opinions are divided. Excellent. Okay. Number two. I believe that the government will win another term in office, mm -hmm. but my girlfriend takes a different opinion. I believe the government will win another term in office, but my girlfriend takes a different opinion. Okay. That's a little tip for you here. Take a different opinion. Take a different opinion. Is it take a different opinion or uh, or is it something else? What would you choose here? Okay, I'll, I think I've just showed you. Yes, I think I, uh, I've led you to the right place. Take the different view. Yeah, thank you very much. Take the different, uh, take the different view. Thank you, Daniel. Mm -hmm. I strongly think that you'd be making a serious mistake if you do that job. Maybe this time we don't have to refer back to the, to the cheat sheet. I strongly think that you'd be making... Okay, I can show you that there's something wrong with I strongly think. So what's wrong with it? Okay, I've got nothing against showing you this page. As long as you can find the answer. Strongly convinced. Um, actually, convinced could work, maybe. But this is about honestly, right? I honestly think, or I really think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number four, I don't believe it's a foregone fact that the larger company will win the contract. So, so where's the collocation problem in here? Can you see it? Uh, bigger company, larger company, that's more or less the same. Thank you, Daniel. Um, I don't believe sounds good. We don't have to change it into I strongly believe. Okay, maybe I'll show you the cheat sheet. Okay, there's something with uh, with. Um, well, I can't tell you really. Not just yet. Okay. And let's go back to here. There's something with something wrong with the with the word that goes with foregone. Foregone conclusion. Very good, Carolina. Mm -hmm. Very good indeed. Okay, number five. People are gradually getting aware of the problem of climate change. So um where is the problem? I'm gradually getting aware. Um, become aware, right? You don't get aware, but you just become aware. Mm -hmm. Or are aware of the fact, just like um, 
just like Booker suggested. Number six, you should bear in thought that your visitors will be tired after the long flight. Bear in mind, excellent Carolina. Mm -hmm. Bear in mind, and Michal. Um, mm -hmm. That's the one. And I've got a raw idea. <coughs> got a raw idea of what I want to say in my essay, but I haven't planned it yet properly. So is it a raw idea? No, it's a rough idea. Thank you very much, Carolina. That's right. Oh, by the way, um, you can have a rough idea. A rough idea. But how about... How about a half-baked idea? Any, any idea what this could mean, right? So if someone tells you, listen, I've got this half-baked idea, why don't we do it this way? What does it really mean if you have a half-baked idea? Any guesses? You know what baking is. Half-baked. Early stage, yeah. Yeah, it's an early stage idea. So it's uh, not fully fledged, right? It's just... Uh, in the in my thought process, yeah, a half baked idea, very nice phrase. I hope you you'd all agree about that. I just uh, give it away to you as a free gift. A half baked idea, just one more collocation that you could use. And let's see, final one. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I guess I was too fast. I hope you don't mind that. But there was something wrong with the word for. <laughs> so you subscribe to the theory. Uh, you don't subscribe for a theory. Sorry for that. OK. Now, just like I said at the beginning, um, this is just the, the tip of the iceberg, uh, both in the meaning of the material I prepared for you but also, uh, you know, publications are everywhere. Let me just show you the stuff that you can, uh, that you will be able to find later in the PDF material. There will be some more collocations uh, on judging. Uh, a handful of more on uh, thinking, some, some metaphors of thinking. Uh, you also find uh, a text packed with collocations on uh, complaining and responding to complaints plus two short exercises two emails to so this is be a homework basically right read the um, the text packed with publications and then do some uh, some exercises and there's also one related to decision making one more text decisions and solutions and here you have lots of collocations and you'll be able to, you know, test yourselves because it is followed by an exercise. So this is going to be a homework. And before we say goodbye, uh, I just want to show you the complete list of the stuff that uh, that uh, is included in that material. About eighty publications altogether, maybe a little bit more, if you add the examples from Wikipedia, for example. Um, so these are the credits. And uh, just one more thing. Um, this can be quite useful. Uh, there are paper dictionaries of collocations, but who uses paper dictionaries nowadays? So I've decided to uh, show you and share with you uh, links to three collocation resources on the internet. And actually, I, I think I'd like to uh, show you uh, how these work in practice. So I'm, going to share my, I'm going to share my screen with you right now. OK, just give me a, a few moments.
Okay, so that's the uh, um, so that's the first one. It's called uh, Austig. Don't really know why, but um, have a look at this. If you are, let's imagine you're writing a text and you want to use the word research in it, right? But uh, you're thinking, okay, what what words should I use with the word research? Let's let's go and find out. You see, what it gives you is a list of adjectives which can go with the word research. So detailed research, in-depth research, painstaking, etc. Piece of research, carry out research, verb plus noun, uh, and many, many other. Okay. The other, the other link will take you to uh, to that website, uh, Lingua Tools, and in here you just uh, search for the word research, and you get examples in. Uh, by you know, sentences used on the internet. Uh, how many hits? If this shows you how um, how strong this collocation is. So that's the second link, and the third, sorry, and the third link. Um, uh, I guess I missed it. Just hang on a second. Okay, here it goes. It's called scale. And let's see what happens. No, let's see what happens when we punch and search. Well, get this um, list of examples in which you can see all those interesting collocations like historical research, worth researching, etc., 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 etc. So, uh, um, so these are just you know three sources uh, on the internet which you could use. I bet there are plenty of other. Um, thank you very much for staying with me here and um, doing some little research on collocations. <laughs> that was great. I wish you all the best of luck in um, finding more collocations. This will surely make your English more classy uh, and uh, definitely more fluent. So um, don't worry about your pronunciation. You don't have to sound like a native speaker. I guess, uh, I guess it's a, it's a well-known fact that if uh, that you don't have to, you know, if you want to speak good English, pronunciation is not the most important thing collocations are. So, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, you can always write to us and uh, you'll get the, uh, the PDF with the uh, complete um, series of texts and exercises um, shortly. Okay? Get something shortly. That's another nice collocation that uh, I'm recommending. Thank you very much everybody. Have a good evening. Bye.